All right, good afternoon. Let's go ahead and get started with our program today. Welcome to Southwire Solutions University. Uh, this is virtual training live. We're excited to have you here. Um, my name is Beth, I'm SSU training coordinator and I'm your host today. And we wanna welcome you. Um, we're also streaming live to YouTube. So uh, welcome YouTube audience. Today, we're gonna continue a series called Where, When, Why, and How. So today's focus is thing. And your Southwire expert that's gonna to present to you today is Mr. Joe Fawcett. And we also have Mr. Johnny Sellers here on our panel that's going to help answer questions for you. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to turn it over to Joe. Hi, I'm Joe Fawcett. I'm the trainer for SSU West out here in Santa Fe Springs, California. So today we're going to be talking about the bend stations. Talk about a better way to bend both EMT and rigid. Make your job faster, more efficient. Both these you can get set up. You can bend up to an inch and a quarter, either the EMT or the rigid just by changing out the heads. So first we're going to talk about kind of how conduit is conventionally run and we're going to talk about how to do it better. Let's talk about how we manage conduit on a jab site. You know, we take it off the truck, sometimes it just gets thrown in the mud. Ideally we want to get it on some sort of rack that can roll. We don't want to be can carrying it around a job site, we got to worry about turning and hitting people in the head. We don't want to put down on the floor. Uh, conventionally you're bending conduit, you got to pull out your tape measure, you're down on the floor, you're bending. Now you check to see if you got your 90. Back, forth, back, forth. Some folks have a real good eye for it. Now you're gonna use the bender as a straight edge because we're gonna put a set on this pipe. We'll measure it out, make our marks. Again, hunched over on the floor. Try and get it lined up. Kinda wants to move a little bit on you. All right, you get your first kick in. Now we gotta flip it over. Try and stabilize it using our knee so we don't slip on the floor. Now we look at it and darn it, Another dog leg. Another task you need to do when you're running conduit is you gotta cut it. What kinds of things are you seeing when you walk around a job? I see the old standby, the on the knee method. Well, here we are, we're bent back over again, straining our back. Wait, <laughs> what is he doing there? That's nuts, stop, do not do this. Oh, and a crook of the ladder. That's a little bit better than what we just saw for sure. Um, you know, when you start to shake your ladder, it's not completely stable. Oh, this is a method that one of the old timers taught me when I first started off using a using the hole in the bender. And for all these reasons and more, that's why Southwire developed the bend station. It's literally designed to raise the level of your conduit game. We're going to get you up off the floor, working at a com comfortable height, have all your tools nearby, be ready for stable cuts, and now we're going to kind of go through it and see it in action. The bend stations have built-in conduit racks and carry up to about 900 feet of conduit depending upon your size assortment. The middle shelf is designed to carry, you know, any fittings, boxes, tools, anything you need to complete your conduit run. When we look at a hand bender, you know, you got your, your star, your notch, and your arrow. You also have the angle measurements. The bend station was designed for an easy transition for anybody that choose to use in a hand bender. We still have the star, the arrow, the notch marks. You'll also notice we got a couple Sharpie marks we just put on here to indicate the center of a 22 and a half and a 30 degree bend for bend and saddles. The bend station replaces all those angle marks on a hand bender with the built-in protractor. This gives you real precise, repeatable bends. Something we need to think about is the spring back on the conduit. It's gonna vary a bit manufacturer to manufacturer. You'll notice here, we actually just put a little Sharpie dot on a protractor to indicate spring back. All right, so before we get started, the first thing we want to do is lock the casters to keep the cart from moving around as we work. Measuring and marking a conduit, instead of having to bend over, stretch out your tape, try and get it hooked over the end of the conduit, try and hold two things, and then mark it, the bend station has an integrated 60-inch ruler on the work surface. Our conduit is marked. You'll also notice that we're using a 40-inch piece. We do this because you get three pieces out of one stick of conduit. Great for training or practicing. All right, we're going to line up our mark with the arrow on the bender. Depending upon your height, you can grab higher in a lever. We're just going to bend it. We do have that little tick mark on our protractor to account for the spring back. Again, that's going to vary by manufacturer, but we're pretty dialed in for this conduit we're using here. We'll pull it out. Let's take a look at that. It looks pretty square. But we're going to go ahead and put it on a table and just confirm either align it to the ruler at any edge or the front tab there. 
and check and confirm that your conduit is actually square. If your conduit's got a kick in it, well, we have this adjustable lever here that you can pull up so you can push your conduit up tight against that so you can take a nice measurement without having to find a wall. Well, to cut the conduit, instead of doing things we used to have to do, it's got a built-in quick vise. You just lay the conduit in there, tighten the screw down a few turns, and have a nice stable surface that you can work off, allowing you to put both hands on the tool. If you're hanging racks and you need to cut some strut, you just slide the strut through the box channel, tighten down. It's nice and secure, again, letting you operate that tool safely. Now we're going to go ahead and look at bending an offset and trying to eliminate those dog legs. Some helpful features are right on the work surface. We have the offset tables printed out. And then what you're really going to want to use is one of the conduit levels here. And that's really going to help you eliminate those dog legs and, and make super nice offsets. We're going to bend our offset on this same piece that we bent the stub on. We're going to make our measurements using the tables. We calculated the shrink and also the distance between bends. We're going to bend a 5 inch offset using 30 degree bends. So we have 10 inches between our marks. Just using the ruler on the table there, no need to pull out the tape measure. And also I can reference that measurement from the 90 against the table of the bender there, not needing to find a wall or set out the bender. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take our little moment here and make sure we got that hook aligned right. We want to be precise. Bend it once, bend it right. We'll go ahead and put our conduit level on there to make sure our, our hook is parallel to the floor. And we're just going to go ahead and do our first bend. All right, we'll then go around, we'll spin it around. Again, line up with the arrow. You know, we have the bend, the level on there. Um, some folks just have a really good eye for, you know, square and parallel and everything. Real nice thing about this is you can kind of sight down that one inch groove to see that you're not dogged. Also notice how close we are to the end of that conduit. This would be a real tough bend to get on a, done with a hand bender. In this case, pretty easy. All right, we're now just gonna put it on a table, confirm that I'm, you know, everything square and parallel there. I got my 96 up perpendicular in both directions and my offsets on the money. The three bend saddle really distinguishes somebody who knows how to bend conduit from somebody that's just kind of beginning, right? You have three bends, you need to get them all in plane. But in addition to that, they have to be the right number of degrees and your measurements need to be right. Now we use the bend station. We're we'll bending using the push through method as opposed to having to, you know, turn the conduit back around like you might have to do in a hand bender. To do those calculations, we actually have the tables printed right on a bender for you, so you don't need to memorize anything. You go ahead, you do your quick calculations, you make your three marks on a conduit, and then we'll just show you how you just push through to, and get a nice repeatable bend. We've done our calculations using the table. We're gonna go ahead and mark our conduit. Our marks are gonna be nine inches apart based on that three time multiplier for the push through method. Important to remember is it's really helpful to make that center mark go all the way around the conduit because you're going to be flipping the conduit. Real easy to do on a table. You just kind of hold the marker in place and rotate the pipe. All right, we got our marks made. We're going to go ahead and slide it in. Now, when we're aligning on a mark here, we are not aligning it to the arrow. I told you earlier that we put that little Sharpie mark on there as, as the reference for our center of a 22 and a half degree bend. So that's what we're lining up with. We're gonna go ahead and put the conduit level on there. You know, if, if you have somebody that's real good with pipe, they're actually gonna be able to just sight down that groove from the one inch half of the shoe, and they could probably do it even without using the level. But we wanna make sure we do it right. Bend it once, bend it right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bend that 22 and a half degree bend. You do need to remember the sequence of your bends here because normally when you're doing a hand bender, you'd bend that 45 first and then do the 22 and a half spacing it. In this case, you're pushing through, so we do that 22 and a half first. 
We'll get lined up on that notch for the center of the 45. We'll check our vial. You can kind of see me sighting down the guide there. Bend it to 45, allow for that little bit of spring back. And then we'll slide it through for our last bend. Got it lined up, again sight and level, sight down a groove. We pull that last bend, it's easy to duplicate the angle because of the protractor. It's not dependent upon which way, you know, the bender, how it's standing up off the ground. And now we're gonna put it on a table check, make sure it's flat, and also that we got the right amount of saddle. And it just feels good when you get it right. One inch EMT poses a challenge for a lot of folks in bending the conduit. Some manufacturers, their, their steel they use to manufacture, it's just really stiff and requires a tremendous amount of strength and it's real hard to get a bend without kind of getting those bubbles on the inside of the, of the 90. So the bend station affords you a couple different advantages. One is the length of the arm. It just gives you more leverage, you know, simple machines going back to high school. But in addition to that, when we go over to the one inch, we're gonna use the ratcheting mechanism. The first thing we're gonna do is flip that roller down so we're on a one inch wheel. Then we're gonna switch the ratchet lever there. And now we're just gonna crank it down and continue around until the one inch shoe is in the proper location. And now we're all set to bend one inch. The conduit is marked. Notice the handle. You can put it higher or lower, just depending upon your strength, comfort level, and how tall you are. I'm gonna use it kind of lower because I'm not as tall as some folks. All right, we're gonna kind of use those clicks to our advantage. Paying attention to the protractor and our spring back mark. We're getting close. We're just gonna watch it. We're gonna bring it up to that little Sharpie mark we made earlier. You know, that we use that as a reference point. And we'll just remove it. And we'll throw it on a table and check for square. When we look at bending rigid, the bend station's gonna kind of raise that head up higher than your typical dolly style benders. It's got a longer handle, and in our ratcheting mechanism, it actually kind of has more clicks to just enable somebody to bend that without putting in as much effort as would be required with the older style bender. You'll see the hook there for three quarter and one inch. Those grooves run parallel to each other. You'll also notice the two rollers right there, one for three quarter, one for one inch. And then you'll notice the markings on the head. The protractor on a rigid bender, you know, works the way you would expect it to. You'll notice the number of clicks in the handle. You can kind of start all the way up if you're a taller person, or you can start a little bit lower down, and we'll see a bit more of that when we're actually bending with it. As we crank around, we're gonna go again you see we have that little mark there we just put a tick mark around 95 degrees for spring back it's gonna vary manufacturer to manufacturer but it's usually like somewhere between 94 and 96 degrees all right the conduit is marked you notice the handle is in the full-up position we'll give it a shot from there kind of once we snug it up on the pipe you'll see it come down to a, a better level here we're aligning with the front edge of the shoe I'm just going to work it. You can see I'm almost doing it one-handed there. Keep an eye on your protractor. In this case, it's kind of interesting. The protractor itself moves and the indicator stays the same as compared to vice versa with the EMT. All right, we're going to go. Again, we have that tick mark we made when we first got this bundle of conduit. Pull it out. We'll throw it up on a table and check for square. To eliminate the need to carry a tripod around the job with you, we mount the chain vise right on the bend station. Gives you a nice firm attachment, allows you to operate that tool with both hands. What you'll also notice is the pipe is actually sitting out at a slight downwards angle to facilitate oil draining out when you're threading the conduit. The bend station was created by an electrician 
to eliminate a lot of the frustrations on the job. You need to carry multiple types of material around the job, right? Instead of needing to push a conduit rack, it's got storage on there. Instead of needing a utility cart, you got the shelf to put your tools, equipment, fittings, boxes, and anything you might need for the installation on. Uh, eliminates the need to continuously bend over to take your measurements and get the conduit in the hook of the bender, right? We got the integrated ruler right on top. Where we're seeing folks use these a lot, great use case for this. So you got a job where you have a bunch of people working off of lifts, you know, have one person down by the bend station, feeding those folks up on a lift, eliminating the need for them to get on and off the lift, you know, to take their measurements, come down, bend the conduit, get back on a the lift. They can just kind of shout down their measurements or text them down to the person operating the bender. You know, and that one person can, can supply probably four or five people working off the of lifts. Also great if you just roll it into the work area, you know, you got one or two people working. Because it's mobile, right? You have all those pieces. You're not needing to carry your vice and your cart and your utility cart and your materials, all that from place to place. So we encourage you to contact your Southwire representative to figure out how to best utilize these on your job. It's definitely going to make that work go better, smoother, quicker, less waste, uh, you know, less misspent pipe. And we appreciate you joining us today. And now we're going to move towards some questions. Joe, great job there, buddy. Uh, oh, looking at the, the, hey, Joe, great job, buddy. Looking at the chat, we don't have any questions at this point. So I know we have a couple of folks on here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, pop it in the chat box and Joe will be able to answer that question for you. All right, we'll, get, we'll give people a minute to type anything in in case it's coming in. Really, again, the, the key points around this bend station are just that, that repeatability, that accuracy. Um, and it's just, if you've bent any conduit using a hand bender before, it's, it's going to be second age or within 10 or 15 minutes of using this thing. You're going to be knocking it out with, you know, you'll dial in the spring back on your conduits and then you'll be one bend the first time the right, right way. Um, also great as a training aid, right? Because it removes some of the variability of uh, maybe somebody's not quite strong enough, they're smaller, and they don't kind of have those long arms and aren't tall, they don't have that leverage on a bender. Um, so it just kind of is a great equalizer. You know, you get lots of folks out there that are great with the conduit math, but maybe just don't have the physical strength to then say a piece of one inch or, or struggle with that three quarter inch rigid. Anything yeah, coming, Johnny, there? No, good points, Joe. And like you like you pointed out very well right there, that whole key thing of being up out of the floor instead of down on your knees and all those ups and downs and wearing out your body doing that, this makes a guy to feel so much more efficient at, at doing these bends. So again, Joe, great job. All right. I don't I don't see any questions coming in. So we're gonna we're gonna call it a session here. Thank everybody for joining us and uh we appreciate you taking your time out with us today.